the eminence in shadow is actually good from Karu. Let's see what he has to say. I am ASMR. Atomic. He said the line. God, the English is so hilarious. The eminence yeah. in shadow is a newly. Is the dub actually better for Atomic? I should check that out. Released Isekai. W wait, you don't know what an Isekai is? What well, is let, it? Me, uh, let me let me let me. A lot of people actually don't know what the meaning of isekai is. Some people think that people have their reincarnated. Does actually, do I even know what an isekai is? I think it's literally transported into a different world. I think that is the bare bones like definition of what of an isekai is. I don't think reincarnation is part of isekai. I, I don't think so. Hopefully I'm right. I'm gonna pull out a definition for you. Yeah. Here. Yeah, J Japanese genre of? Here, here, here. MC dies. Reincarnate. Mm, but that's the thing. I think that's a common misconception. I don't think you have to. I don't think you have to actually reincarnate, right? Because, because like you know, you remember I I got a cheat skill in another world. That's also considered an isekai, and he was basically porting back from his world in the fantasy world back and forth. He never died. That's still an isekai. I'm pretty sure. It gets infinite bitches. Meanwhile, true. Breaking news: You get no bitches. <laughs> But this one, this one's it's different. different from That's right. Out of one, two, three, four, five, out of like 50 shows, Eminence and Shadow is different. The other quintillion copies out there. I'm assuming I don't watch this shit. The Eminence and Shadow follows a guy called Sid, whose mm. sole purpose in life is to become an anime character. Now, before you start projecting yourself in him like you did trying to be the best pirate king in all of the Hidden Leaf Village, Sid is not like you. You fucking nerd. He wants to be an what? anime background character. What? True. That is the different thing about Sid, right? He wants to be the eminence in shadow. The, the one, he who lurks in the shadows to hunt the shadow. But beyond that, right? He, what is his normal persona? He wants to be a background character so that whenever he goes into shadow mode, it's more cool. Maybe? What? You mean the one that walks behind the main character? The one yes. that says the one-liners? God forbid. Wait, one. Ho hold up. Go, go back here. What did what what that say? So are traps actually gay? <sighs> I don't know what to tell you guys, but if you, if, you, if you think traps are hot, doesn't mean you're completely straight and there's nothing wrong with that, man. It just means you might be, you might be bi. That says the one-liners? God forbid. The one who explains everything for five minutes straight. Yes, that one. But he's also super OP. So in order to fit into his roleplay, he has to do the most background character shit ever, like getting beaten by a sister, mm -hmm. being an incel, simping for 2D fictional anime girls. Well, this is more about the coin, right? This is more, I don't think he was simping for Alexia here. I think this is more about Sid just fucking money hungry to the point where this part of his character actually transcends all his like personas. This money this money hungry character persona is transparent it's it exists in shadow fuck probably mundane man as well exists in fucking john smith for sure huh i guess you guys do have something in common what what's going on here i bet this is you armin wolfers <laughs> and it's makima he want to be my dog <laughs> People really do love being chained up and fucking groomed by Maki Mahal. If she said to bark, would you guys bark? Bark and chat for me, guys. Type bark and chat for me right now. You guys do have something in common. Who here is a Makima fan? Me! Me! Anime was a mistake. This show is. Anime was a mistake. If you don't know that this is uh, the producer, the, the guy that makes the Ghibli films, right? This, uh, I think. Um, uh, Miyazaki or something, and he straight up says anime was a mistake, but this is like a cosplay of him. Right this here. show is a lot of dumb fun. And part of the reason why it's so good is because it hooks you in immediately with yeah. rapid, fast pacing and a captivating storyline. What is that storyline? Call of uh, Diablo. I don't know, so it just kind of makes it up. That's the thing. What is the storyline? I don't really know. I think a lot of people, you know, and that's the beautiful thing. You don't have to know the plot of Eminence and Shadow. Things are always happening in the background. This show is as casual as you want it to be, but it's also as deep as you want it to be. It's a lot of detail that goes around in the world building and the different things the Shadow Garden is doing in preparation for the next plot, the next arc and stuff like that. But at the same time, if you don't care about that, if you're just here for the anime boo-boo and the cool I'm a topic moments, that's perfectly fine too because they all pretty much cater towards every one of those deeds and it's, I think that's one of the most beautiful things about Emerson Shadow. As it goes. I'm serious. One time he accidentally saves this girl from an evil curse and when she asks what happened to her, he goes, Why the fuck did he censor Alpha here? It makes it look even more sus, bro. Happened to her? He goes full on D&D Dungeon Master mode, giving her background lore, character arcs, and villains off the top of his head. And what happens next? 
But it wasn't the top of his head because again, this is straight from the carts from uh, a Cult of Diabolus merch, right? This is Cult of Diabolus merch that was actually in here. So him making all these different um, plot lines and making shit up off of the material from the Cult of Diablo is actually kind of, you know, it, it makes a lot more sense if you think about it like that. It's off the top of his head, what happens next? Merch, yes. He's actually right. Everything he says is true. Yeah, There's no much. point in trying to understand the plot of this show. Believe me, I tried my absolute best to follow what was going on. And okay, so Diablos is the ruler of demons with unimaginable yeah. power. And yeah. Cult of Diablo and after a while, I really- What even is the plot of Emerson Shadow? Because the end villain are the Cult of Diablos, right? And we know that there's like the Knights, the Rounds Table. But other than that, sometimes shit just happens and we just go along with it. Like, the Lawless City, John Smith, we're just having fun side missions. Is this contributing to the Cult of Diablos kind of? They're kind of intertwined. Getan was a part of Cult of Diablos there, right? And meeting up with, like, Yukimi was kind of important to, you know, establish some kind of alliance for the future and stuff like that. But if you think about it, Cult of Diablos never really got a significant portion of the story in season two so far. I think with the next arc, though, going into the Rose Kingdom, right? You know, take Oriana Kingdom. Actually, what is it Oriana Kingdom? I think that's her last name, right? So I think now we're going to actually go into Cult of Diablos, but it never really... Like, I know they exist, but what is the pl plot? Are we trying to defeat them? I guess we are. But at the same time, Shadow's just fucking around and just trying to be cool. I don't really know. I don't really know. Realize, like, hold up. Wait a minute. This is all bullshit. In every single episode, Maybe. the author just adds more elements to the story so that the thing he mentioned in the previous episodes makes sense. And it's almost always just a way for him to show off Sid's dumb fuckery. It's like waking up from a dream and trying to recount all the bits and pieces you remember. Oh my, what the what the what? Why is that censored here? Why? The censoring makes it even more sus! That laundry, that sister laundry scene was crazy. Isn't that, isn't that sad? Alexia and Iris shared such a funny moment back then with the laundry shopping episode, remember? And they were actually like good sisters, like so friendly to each other. And now what's happened in season two? I don't think Iris likes Alexia at all anymore. I think Alexia has changed for the better, but Iris, is, this is just sad. And shoving them all into this one coherent timeline. I personally think the best way to experience this anime is by accepting that you know nothing at all. and just going along for the ride. Ever since then, any scene that had anything to do with story building pretty much looked like this for me. I think they do all these kind of moments really well. Like, for example, a lot of the exposition, a lot of the story stuff, a lot of the plot stuff, there's a lot of moments where there's a lot of fan service going on at the same time so that the audience is like not bored from the exposition, the plot lore drop. They have something to look at the screen the entire time. I played it in two times speed. <laughs> important you know that was actually kind of important showing how Claire cares a lot about Sid you know Oriana's showing up as like a disciplinary committee like this, this is pretty Dude's good speed. sure I would only understand how that's crazy that actually happened Oriana really did that this is one of the first times she actually showed up in the show she just apprehended Claire like that. that's crazy understand half the shit that's going on but it's okay because one yeah. it saves time and two you don't it doesn't matter shit's gonna matter it's true though it, it's 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 not true but it's true if you don't know the plot of the show it's fine you don't really have to pay attention because they'll explain it to you in ways that you'll kind of, they'll explain all you need to know at the end. Just enjoy the fucking ride. Enjoy the memory. Just don't worry about it. But if you do care about it, there's actually a good plot. There's actually a good plot to be kind of like, be, to be read. After like five episodes, Sid is also one of the main reasons why this anime is so fun to watch. He genuinely believes that everyone around him is just going along with his role playing up power role fantasy. playing that the people that kidnapped his sister are just regular old bad guys looking to bribe a few coins and schmeckles it's very funny to me because every time sid is faced with any trouble he has to go about it in the most anime way possible so let's say a bunch of terrorists enter your school what do you gotta do you gotta be the first one to die so that you can be the most npc character ever okay sorry a little bit, a little bit extreme. Backstory, backstory, okay, okay, yeah. So let's say a bunch of terrorists enter your school, and you're super OP. So you can probably deal with these guys with your eyes closed, right? Should. Yeah. Wrong. Because you're- Well, Shadow can, but Sid is different. You're supposed to be an NPC. Uh -huh. Everyone knows that NPCs have to sacrifice their life so that the main character in the story lives. Stop being such a fucking idiot. Boy, I'd say that scene was pretty important. I'd say that this scene was important for raising up Oriana even more. And that's how we got the one of the best girls. Boy, lives. Stop being such a fucking idiot. But what everyone doesn't know is that you secretly survived by rearranging your heart and your organs. 
which is more import more fascinating, more um, what's it more impressive because right now there's a barrier up. There's an artifact that prevents you from using magic, but Sid's still able to use magic. How? Don't worry about it. Don't ask. Yeah, don't worry about it. If you start asking questions, then it's not fun anymore. If you start asking questions, it's not fun anymore. In an anime like Eminence and Shadow, I think that does apply. This line is kind of dangerous if you apply it to many different animes because now you're throwing out all type of constructive criticism, thought, or whatever you, you want to like. Like, sometimes it's better to just turn your brain off and just enjoy the content. That is kind of true. It, well, it depends on what kind of show it is. Eminence and Shadow doesn't pretend to be a smart show, so you don't have to, you know, critique it like that. You can just fucking, you know, ignore what's going on. Just enjoy the fun fight and just go, oh, 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 he said I'm atomic. Okay. Great. Now it's your turn to discreetly take down the organization from the inside. One of the coolest moments. He did these, like, slime bullet guns. I, I wish he would still do that more. I'd, thus completing your job as the Eminence in Shadow. That makes sense? Of course it fucking doesn't, this guy is insane. Apart from Sid, I think the other characters are... fine. I'm sure you'll find that there are only a select few that actually have some depth to their character. Like, I think this girl Alexia is meh. Only some has a depth to their character. I think it's only because it's only season 1. Right? Like, Skell and Poe, they have depth to their character. They're just fun side characters. Sometimes you get to learn a little bit more about them. Alexia... Um... I think Alexia is actually pretty deep. I think Alexia is actually pretty deep. I think uh, this is a girl that showed out of nowhere. I thought she was just some kind of Ojo Sama girl, but she's actually got like super insecurities to her bigger sister. And she was suddenly just like dating Sid just to break off this engagement, which is like this, like uh, to make Zen and Griffey, you know, jealous because it's an arranged marriage and whatnot. And then Alexia also has like a complex with like her simple swordsmanship, but it actually mirrors shadow swordsmanship. So now she understands that, you know what, I can actually accept my swordsmanship and become better. And now she's actually developing into like, she's actually doing a, she's in a, she's in her fucking training arc right now. She's like doing a character development arc. I think Alexia's pretty deep. Iris also. I think these are actually pretty fucking good characters. You know, the girl that has to fucking... What's the word? Like her, her dad's the king, but the king isn't doing shit. So this Midgar, emphasis on mid, she has to do everything to save it. But she fucking gets bodied by Monday Man during the Bushin Festival. And now, you know, things are looking bad. And now she's going down, down the fucking path of darkness. I think these characters are pretty deep. Even each of the shades, right? They don't get enough screen time to actually get full fleshed out backstories but i'm sure this is just karu making you know uh, a review based off of the limited episodes that he watched right but i think they are pretty decently deep her sister <laughs> iris is okay and rose is my favorite yes oriana's great oriana's great no 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 you've got to be fucking kidding me mm. i You're give you my heart yeah Wait till she gets the burger wrapper, Karu. Wait till she gets the burger wrapper that she treasures. Damn, I actually hurt my hand fucking doing that. <laughs> Fuck. Should've been it me! Should've been me, not him! It's not fair! And then... <laughs> and then? And then you got the latest villain right now, who's literally a guy called Perv Asshat. Lord! I don't know if that's a translation thing, or it's actually like that. Straight up, it's just Lord Perv ass hat in Japanese. All I know is, I'm glad my rival in Pokemon is getting the recognition he deserves. There's also this guy, <laughs> and the this isn't a. Who the? F uh, no, this is just random Bushin Festival like fights, right? I'm pretty sure this is when Goldie was introduced and learning about power levels. Spoiler. I mean, I guess it's like a minor spoiler, but it's really not that significant. Anyway, there's this guy called Imatri Nautilus. <laughs> And then it was like, oh yeah, all the names are just puns. All the names are puns. And it's basically like, I'ma try not, not to lose. To lose. Yeah. You know, he, he tries not to lose. Even like someone like John Smith. Like John Smith, if you think about it, it is the most like generic American name. John Smith or like John Doe. This is the most simplest meme basic American name. It's just like an NPC name straight up. It is. It's a bit of a pun, isn't it? Other than that, the rest of the girls are extremely one note and pretty much only serve to fill up Sid's harem. So if the rest of the girls are just one note and just served. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of Delta Booba. And you know what? Based off of season one stuff, I think you can be right to say that. Like, obviously, in the light novel and the manga, the shades are different, right? I'm sure they got a lot of more development, they matter more. But if you see from just season one content, they don't really focus in on the shades as much. 
So I can definitely see how Kaido is going to think that these characters are just like static characters that sits in the sidelines and just, you know, just does all this background shit that you know, Shadow needs to have done. But I don't think they're... I think they're, I, I think these characters are all you know, complex characters by themselves. It's just we haven't gone through their backstory and stuff like that. If you're into that kind of shit, then you can go ahead and go cuckoo bonkers over some anime bedonkers. Mm. But I think the rest of us, um, yeah, how do you call it? What? Normal humans would actually appreciate some character development. Nah. I'm character development? I, no, I, Alexia is actually getting so much character development. Even Orion is getting so much character development in season one too, right? Cause she goes from random girl at the school that we I, that I kind of like into Sid's like fucking crush into like what's not not crush but she's like crushing on Sid and then she gets this entire development arc about going against her kingdom and now she's like part of the fucking shadow garden and she's still developing I I think a lot of shit's going on and Claire I think Claire is like uh, what's the word she's getting a lot more development now in season two but in season one she was like what the fuck is the point of Claire right but yeah based on just season one what he saw. I don't blame Kara for thinking like this. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. I live for this shit. But I know what you're thinking. This shit can't last forever, or else it'd get old real quick and start to get boring. No, you're totally you right. Would, you would think so. You would think that I'm Atomic would get boring. But here's the thing. That's why you don't repeat it every time. You'll notice that every I'm Atomic has been a different variant of I'm Atomic. First one in episode five. That was the coolest I'm Atomic because that was the first one ever, you know? That's going to be the one that's last in our memory. The second one, I think it was the I'm the all range Atomic, which is different definitely different right and they're also adding in different voice bits you know through the whatever asmr voice that they're doing i think it was gotcha right that was pretty cool too and then there was um the third one i think in season one was like a silent uh i'm atomic where it's just like i am and then that you know there's it's, it's, it's like a flashback and i think there's like a child sit that shows up and i think people said child sit mouth some words said yamero I'm not sure if, or maybe it was I'm Atomic. Anyways, they went up to this guy. It was kind of like a troll move. And then there's like, I am Recovery Atomic. But you'll notice that it's different every time. There's also the Silent Atomic, right? But you'll notice you can't repeat the same shit over and over again. So it was really good direction for Aurora to kind of like, even it was anime only, but Aurora doing the fucking fake out I'm Atomic scene. That kind of shit gets me a lot more hype. Different variants to make this more funnier. The same thing, but different to be better. Episodes of this show is like getting clickbaited by a good YouTube title and thumbnail, but everyone like this, <laughs> like this video. Who knows? You have to make good content in order to keep the audience watching till the end. No, no, you can make shit content to make the audience watch till the end. What just matters is like the pacing of the video, the different edits. Like, it just fucking mess with their ADHD brain, bro. Just put fucking subway surface in the side. <coughs> 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 He's, he's very self-aware. For now, I still find it enjoyable because aside from all the shenanigans... Wait a minute, wait a minute. This video was made nine months ago. Are you telling me nine months ago he was only at 4.8k subs and now he's at 78? That's fucking insane. This guy's growing like fucking crazy. <coughs> Holy <coughs> shit. <coughs> For now, I still find it enjoyable because aside from all the shenanigans that Sid gets up to, there's been some moments where he sort of steps out from his super OP character persona and he seems to actually care about what the other characters think. Yeah, just fucking toss Rosenberg. Did Sid even care? Did Sid care about Oriana's problems here in this scene? Was he even listening? I don't think he was. I think he just tossed her a burger and said, ah, yeah, you do whatever you want to do, and I'll, I, th I think it'll be all right. I think it'll be all right. I don't think he listened for shit here, bro. I also like that the anime doesn't purely focus on him, but also lets us look at the world from other people's point of view. You know, from the people who actually risk their lives and have stakes yes. to lose. I think... And that's the point of this show. Again, another comparison with, like, you know, One Punch Man. I think Eminence and Shadow is Isekai One Punch Man because... Main characters are so OP, they can't show up and solve everything. That's why you have these supporting side characters that you get immersed to. Have them, you know, be the focus. And then when they get threatened by opponents who should be jobbers, we think that they're an actual threat because we're seeing this from the perspective of the side characters, which are good. And then Shadow comes in, does a thing, cool moment, repeat, rinse. Just give me more of it, bro. It just works every time. I think every once in a while, it's nice to see Sid fuck around and find out what happens next. Because apparently whatever he does moves the plot forward. But knowing what struggles Alexia, Iris, and Rose have gives me a better understanding of the world that they live in. It's more refreshing than anything because it reminds me that, oh yeah, not everyone's like Sid. If they die, they die. Yeah. If they're in trouble, they can't... 
Quinton, bro. Fucking Quinton. Just one shot talk Nojutsu bullshit their way out of it. The animation is also pretty good. Again, I don't watch Isekai shows because <laughs> I have a life. So I most certainly have no clue if this is normal. But from what I've seen, this show knows what it's doing in terms yep. of fight choreography and mixing in CGI pretty seamlessly. I do agree that only time will tell how this show actually. This is the biggest bait. These suits were the biggest bait. This never fucking happened, bro. What the fuck? I was waiting for this to happen in season one. It never happened. Tell how this show actually turns out. And I saw some people on Reddit saying it gets What the fuck is this? What is this? Why? Give me it. An arc, so that's also a thing. But honestly, who really has time to think? Isekai fans when there's a good story in their harem anime. <laughs> is, is this you guys? Is this my average watcher? Is this my average isekai watcher right now? Think about that. Why can't we just enjoy the fun show we've been given and worry about the other shit when we get there? By the time Agreed. this video comes out, the last episode of the season should be airing the day after. And you best believe I'ma be there to see how everything turns out in the end. Am I gonna look back 20 years from now and remember how entertaining of a show this was? Fuck no, that spot's left for Attack on Titan. But at least I can say, right here, right now, that this show was an amusing watch. And in the end, you're gonna grow old, I'm gonna grow old, and possibly, even as soon as you finish watching this video, as you click on the next one, you'll have easily forgotten about my existence completely. This is getting way too real, what the fuck? That's just life. Unless you hit that wonderful subscribe button. That got a little bit too real by the end, but goddamn, I can see why this channel has grown so much in the past of fucking nine months, bro. This shit here nine months ago. I hope he makes a season two video, but goddamn. Give his video, you know, a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to his channel if you did. I enjoyed this. Edmondson Shadow, I think, again, amazing. What the fuck is going on here? What the fuck is this thumbnail? We, I, anyways, I think Edmondson Shadow is still perfect. I don't think it's perfect, actually. But... You know, the stuff that he had to say about characters being static, I think that's just because of the limited content we've had in season one. I don't think the characters are just random characters like that. I think each one of them are very complex and have great story development. Again, the plot, you don't really have to care for it, but you can if you want to, and it'll be a gun time. If you haven't watched Eminence Shadow, just fucking watch it. But hey, we do these reactions live on YouTube, 7 a.m. PST, on Twitch as well, so hope to see you there.